The book of Revelation, a profound piece of scripture, is filled with symbols and cryptic messages and has fascinated scholars and believers for centuries. It's here where the story of the seven seals is unveiled, a narrative rich with metaphor and meaning. Let's start with the first seal, often depicted as a white horse, with its rider holding a bow and given a crown, symbolizing conquest and victory. This image has been the subject of various interpretations by prominent scholars. Historically, some have seen it as a symbol of Christ himself, representing the spread of the gospel and the triumph of Christianity. This view is supported by the rider's crown and the bow, which are seen as symbols of authority and conquest but not through violence. But this interpretation ignores the wider context of Bible prophecy in the entire Bible, overlooking prophecies of the Old Testament, especially Daniel. Instead, the rider on the white horse is seen by some as a prelude to the coming of the Antichrist. This interpretation draws parallels with the prophecies found in the book of Daniel. Daniel speaks of various beasts representing different empires and leaders, Daniel chapter 7 verse 3 7, and later, a little horn, that emerges as a powerful, boastful king, Daniel chapter 7 verse 8. This figure is often associated with the Antichrist in eschatological interpretations. The Antichrist is perceived as a figure of deception, initially appearing as a force for good or peace but ultimately leading the world into chaos and destruction. The crown and bow, symbols of authority and power, further strengthen this interpretation. This leader's rise to prominence and the significant changes in world power dynamics he brings are seen as fulfilling Daniel's prophecy of a king who will speak against the Most High and oppress the holy people, Daniel chapter 7 verse 25. In this view, the opening of the first seal in Revelation is not just a standalone event but part of a larger narrative that includes the visions and prophecies of Daniel. Painting a picture of a world moving towards a dramatic and tumultuous period in human history. Some contemporary theologians suggest that the first seal could symbolize the beginning of the end times, marked by the emergence of influential world leaders and the reshaping of global politics. This interpretation is often linked to current events, suggesting that the symbolism of the white horse is continually evolving and relevant to each generation's geopolitical landscape. Such interpretations, while speculative and varying among scholars, highlight the complexity of biblical prophecy and its interconnected nature, drawing threads from different books and times to construct a comprehensive view of what the end times may entail. The second seal, as depicted in Revelation chapter 6 verse 3-4, introduces a red horse, symbolizing war and bloodshed. One interpretation, held by scholars like John F. Walvoord, suggests that the red horse represents a period of great warfare following the initial conquest of the white horse. Walvoord, a prominent theologian in the field of biblical prophecy, views this as a sequential unfolding of events leading to more extensive conflicts and upheavals. Another perspective is offered by scholars who link the red horse to the historical context of the Roman Empire. They suggest that the red horse symbolizes the internal strife and civil wars that plagued the empire, reflecting a broader theme of political and social chaos. In the broader context of biblical prophecy, some scholars draw connections between the red horse of Revelation and the prophecies in Daniel. Just as Daniel's visions speak of empires rising and falling through conflict, Daniel chapter 7 verse 5-6, the red horse can be seen as a continuation of this theme, symbolizing the destructive power of empires and their military conquests. Furthermore, scholars like G.K. Beale interpret the red horse as a symbol of divine judgment. In this view, the wars and conflicts represented by the red horse are not just historical events but also part of the judgment process that leads to the final resolution of the end times. Whether viewed as a literal prophecy, a metaphor for historical events, or a symbol of the human condition, the Red Horse of Revelation continues to be a subject of rich scholarly debate and analysis, contributing to the ongoing discussion about the nature and timing of end times events. The third seal, described in Revelation chapter 6 verse 5-6, introduces a black horse whose rider holds a pair of scales. This imagery has been extensively analyzed by scholars, leading to various interpretations that delve into its symbolic representation of famine and economic imbalance, indicative of a period of scarcity and hardship. One prominent interpretation, as offered by scholars like Robert H. Mounts, views the black horse as a symbol of severe famine. Another line of thought, represented by scholars like David Chilton, relates the black horse to the economic consequences of war, as foreshadowed by the red horse. Chilton argues that in a historical context, wars often lead to famine and economic hardship, as resources are diverted to military endeavors, disrupting agricultural production and trade. Theological interpretations also draw connections to Old Testament imagery. 
For instance, some scholars compare the black horse to the curses for disobedience listed in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, where famine is a recurring motif for divine judgment against unfaithfulness. Furthermore, eschatological interpretations, as presented by futurist scholars, suggest that the black horse signifies a forthcoming global economic crisis that will precede the end times. In many evangelical circles, this global economic crisis sets the stage for the arrival of the Antichrist, who will emerge onto the scene and help solve the world's economic problems. The fourth seal, depicted in Revelation chapter 6 verse 7 8, presents a pale horse, an ominous symbol ridden by death, with Hades in pursuit. This seal has garnered significant attention from scholars, who interpret it as representing a period of widespread mortality, potentially caused by factors like war, famine, or plague. This interpretation not only stands on its own but also connects to the preceding seals, particularly the third seal's themes of famine and economic hardship. Scholars like Barbara Rossing view the pale horse as a culmination of the events set in motion by the previous seals. Rossing, known for her work on biblical eschatology, suggests that the progression from conquest, first seal, war, second seal, and famine, third seal, naturally leads to the widespread death symbolized by the fourth seal. This sequential interpretation highlights the interconnectedness of these events, suggesting a domino effect leading to a significant human toll. This interpretation is particularly relevant when considering historical contexts where war and famine were often followed by outbreaks of plague. The close following of Hades, the realm of the dead, further emphasizes the deadly nature of this seal. From a symbolic standpoint, some scholars like Craig Coester interpret the pale horse as a metaphor for the fragility of human life and the inevitability of death. Coester, who specializes in apocalyptic literature, argues that this imagery serves as a stark reminder of mortality and the transient nature of human endeavors, especially in the wake of war and scarcity. In terms of biblical prophecy, the fourth seal is often linked to the prophetic writings in the Old Testament, such as the plagues in Egypt described in Exodus or the prophetic warnings of Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Futurist interpretations of the fourth seal suggest that it predicts a future time of unprecedented global mortality, potentially through modern means such as biological warfare or global pandemics. The fifth seal, as described in Revelation chapter 6 verse 9-11, unveils a poignant scene, the souls of martyrs beneath the altar, crying out for justice. This imagery has been extensively explored by scholars, with interpretations focusing on themes of persecution, martyrdom, and the vindication of the righteous. One prominent interpretation comes from theologians like Elizabeth Schusler Fiorenza, who see the fifth seal as a powerful testament to the suffering of early Christians under persecution. Another perspective, offered by scholars such as Leon Morris, connects the fifth seal to the broader biblical theme of the suffering of the righteous. Morris interprets the martyr's plea for justice as a reflection of the Psalms and the prophets, where the faithful often cry out to God in their suffering. In a more contemporary context, theologians like Jürgen Moltmann interpret the fifth seal in terms of modern experiences of persecution and martyrdom. Moltmann suggests that this seal speaks to all who have suffered for righteousness' sake, not just early Christian martyrs, making its message universally relevant and poignant. Futurist interpreters, such as Tim LaHaye, view the fifth seal as a prophecy of future persecution that will occur before the end times. In this view, the seal is a forewarning of a period of intense tribulation for believers, an era of testing and purification for the church. Overall, the fifth seal's depiction of the souls of martyrs crying out for justice is a multifaceted symbol that scholars interpret through various lenses, historical, theological, and prophetic. These interpretations highlight the enduring relevance of the seal's themes of persecution, martyrdom, and the longing for divine justice and vindication. The sixth seal, detailed in Revelation chapter 6 verse 12 17, presents a series of dramatic cosmic disturbances, earthquakes, a darkened sun, and a blood-red moon. Scholars have delved deeply into these apocalyptic images, interpreting them as signs of the nearing end of the current age and the onset of eschatological events. We have detailed the futurist perspective in other videos, looking at possible literal scenarios that could unfold, such as asteroid collisions or nuclear war. Here we will look at some alternatives. One interpretation, espoused by scholars like G.K. Beale, views these cosmic signs as symbolic rather than literal. Beale, known for his work on the New Testament and Revelation, suggests that these images represent a deconstruction of the created order, signaling the undoing of the world as it is known and the beginning of a new creation. This interpretation aligns with biblical themes of renewal and judgment. Historical critical scholars, such as David Orne, place these images within the context of ancient apocalyptic literature. 
Orn notes that similar imagery can be found in Jewish and Greco-Roman texts, where celestial disturbances often symbolize divine intervention in human affairs. This interpretation sees the sixth seal as part of a broader cultural and literary tradition. The connection to Old Testament prophecy is also a significant aspect of the interpretation of the sixth seal. Scholars draw parallels with passages in Isaiah, Joel, and Ezekiel, where similar cosmic signs are associated with the Day of the Lord, a time of divine judgment and salvation. This linkage suggests a continuity in the biblical narrative concerning the end times. Reflecting the tumultuous nature of human history and its culmination in a transformative event. Overall, the Sixth Seal's depiction of cosmic disturbances is subject to a range of scholarly interpretations, from the literal to the symbolic, each providing a unique lens through which to view these apocalyptic signs. The Seventh Seal, as described in Revelation chapter 8 verse 1, marks a pivotal moment in the apocalyptic narrative. A profound silence in heaven, which precedes the sounding of seven trumpets, each announcing its own set of cataclysmic events. One interpretation, offered by scholars like Craig R. Coester, focuses on the symbolic meaning of the silence in heaven. Coester, an expert in apocalyptic literature, suggests that this silence represents a solemn pause before the unfolding of momentous events, akin to a calm before a storm. This pause can be seen as a moment of anticipation and reflection, both in heaven and on earth, as the narrative prepares to shift to a new series of divine actions. Futurist theologians, such as Tim LaHaye, view the seventh seal as a literal precursor to further judgments that will be unleashed upon the world. In this perspective, the silence in heaven is interpreted as a dramatic pause that heightens the severity of the forthcoming judgments, symbolized by the seven trumpets. Another perspective comes from scholars who emphasize the liturgical and ritualistic aspects of the silence. For instance, some suggest that this silence reflects the practices of ancient temple worship, where silence was observed as a sign of reverence and awe in the presence of the divine. The sounding of the seven trumpets, following the silence, is often interpreted in relation to the plagues of Egypt described in the book of Exodus. Additionally, the sequence of the seven trumpets is sometimes seen as a continuation and intensification of the themes introduced in the first six seals. This perspective, held by theologians like Leon Morris, views the entire sequence of seals and trumpets as a cohesive narrative that progressively reveals God's plan for judgment and redemption. Overall, the seventh seal, with its profound silence and the subsequent sounding of the trumpets, is interpreted by scholars in various ways, reflecting the rich symbolism and deep theological implications of this passage. Whether viewed as literal events, symbolic representations, or liturgical elements, the seventh seal continues to be a significant focus of study in eschatological scholarship. Interpreting the seven seals of Revelation is a complex task, layered with symbolism and diverse perspectives, offering various interpretations by scholars and theologians. As we conclude, remember that the study of Revelation and its seals is not just about predicting the future, but understanding the messages and lessons they hold for us today. Thank you for joining us in this exploration of one of the most captivating and mysterious chapters of the Bible. For more insightful discussions on biblical prophecy and its meaning in our modern world, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, keep seeking knowledge and understanding.